That's right. That's right. Now watch that. I'm going to show you a video. Hey, give me damage control and put the disclaimer up too. This is a, a, a well, he's new to me. I just came across him, but I, I, I do get a good chuckle off his videos. Because he, he be hitting home on some of them things he be saying. Yeah. Never marry a woman who thinks she's better than you. This goes back to what we read with David and his wife. She felt because she was the daughter of King Saul, she was better than David. She envied David, her husband. She hated him. Go ahead. It's home for me because I've seen it so often. I've counseled with guys through divorce care, through Christian ministries, through breakups, through so many things. And I've seen so many guys that have actually married a woman they absolutely adore. But the woman thinks she's better than you. And ultimately, she's jealous of you. Avoid women who think they are better than you because you can never make them happy. And here's the thing. As your success continues to rise, their anger, their resentment, their animosity towards you will continue to rise. So outwardly, people look at you and say, "Those oh, she's so lucky to have this man. He's a multimillionaire, a good family man, all these other things. And all she's sitting there and saying, it should be me. I'm better than him. Especially, this, this really runs deep, especially in women who are failed actresses and failed models. When you meet a woman who is a struggling local actress, struggling local model, attractive, but she just doesn't have that it factor. You can kick it with her, you can date her, you can hang out with her, but do not make any kind of commitment to her. And for God's sake, don't marry her or have any children. Because one, she is always gonna have in her mind any kind of weight I put on, anything that happens is going to potentially hurt this non-existent career she's dreaming about, this fame that she wants, this thing that she cannot have, and especially if you're like Seth Curry and you actually attained it. He married his high school sweetheart. He was a teenage boy and she was a teenage girl. That 15-year-old boy was ecstatic to have that gorgeous girl because she actually grew into her womanness before he grew into his manness. He has finally grown into his man's body, into his man's mind, and become the man a lot of people saw in him. She's still looking at him as the same little boy who was blowing her kisses and kissing her ass as a teenager. And that's what you saw come out. That's what it is. It wasn't that she wants more attention. It wasn't that she wants more guys on her DM. She married a guy that she thinks she's better than. And honestly, she's jealous of him. She's jealous because I'm sitting at home, pumped out three kids, and he's on TV every day. He's getting all the fame. He's getting all the red carpet treatment. He's getting all this. And only time she gets attention is attention that he deflects to her. We wouldn't know about Aisha. Yeah, hold on, mute that thing for me. He tries to thing. put her in the spotlight. Mute that thing. It's true. Bishop, you remember when we travel, when we come back home, what we heard? You was on vacation. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. You was on vacation. That's her envy, your position. Instead of saying, I cannot believe you put your life in the line. Right. Because yeah. it's a, uh, one day we ain't going to make it back. Right. Right. You understand? But her mindset is you in vacation. Because mm -hmm. she envy you. Yeah. You understand that she become, she, uh, she become just like the sister you just mentioned in, in uh, second, uh, Samuel. That's what we're dealing with here. Instead of like, look at it like, the, uh, oh, that's my husband. He's doing a good job for the Lord. You, you just come on. Oh, you in a, uh, uh, yeah, you in the other country. She's calling you about bills. I'm telling you, man, that brother is on point. Hey, before you start that, he said something heavy, heavy, heavy. That's, that's very heavy in IUIC. He said about the envy where he said, if she thinks she's better than you, do not marry her. That is, that's running heavy in IUIC. And I'm going to tell you this. Especially if you are, have those, what you call bachelor degrees, master degrees, and you don't, you don't even have a high school diploma. And you're making more money than her. She just sit at home, and lay on her back, envy, and she, in her mindset, I am better than you. 
I am better than you because you never, you don't even have a high school diploma. That's, that's what playing, that's why you see a lot of problem today. The system I said is, I'm better than you. Well, sis, if you're better than me, why don't you put your master degree into, to, to use? You got a master degree hanging in the dim wall. Here I am, I don't even finish high school, I'm making 100 grand a year. And you beat her. I didn't hold you back. You hold yourself back. That's what he's saying. We have a lot of that going on in Israel. 100% correct. Roll the tape. He tries to put her in front and center. And guess what? If she had what it takes, she'd already be there. And that's what's not being told. If she had anything that should make her a star or put her on that level, she'd be there. Will Smith married Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett had a modicum of success, but she was never nowhere close to being what Will was. Look at what Will tried to do with his son. He kept trying to push his son out there, but his son isn't Will. Well, guess what? Aisha ain't Steph. Let me tell you what I fear is going to happen. I fear this is what's going to happen. She's going to end up divorcing him. It's going to get to a point to where it is intolerable. She's already made this faux pas. She's already put it out there. It's out in the ether and she's getting drugged by men. And people are actually looking at her like, what the hell is wrong with you? So she's going to have to pipe down. She's not going to be able to say much about anything, but it is going to tear her apart, tear him apart because, it, because at the end of the day, she thinks she's up here and she thinks he's down here. It is not going to change. She does not view Steph Curry as the NBA all-star world champion basketball player. She views Steph Curry as this guy that her mom and dad and her parents told her, you need to marry and secure the bag. She didn't want to be there. She would have rather been a struggling actress in Hollywood trying to get bit parts in commercials, trying to get pickups in, in TV, you know, trying to be an extra here or trying to get a, a print commercial or something while it ended up... Uh, dating whoever honestly she'd have been happier that way i know too many women like this trust me i've seen this in my life there are women like her who are above average looking let's be honest she's not that fine i mean she's attractive but she ain't model fine she's pretty but she ain't all that she can't handle it she's not built for it but she thinks she is she can't even handle the overflow traffic she gets from her husband what the hell makes her think she can handle it in the spotlight but the problem is she's too close to the sun she's close enough to where she actually thinks she could do just fine and, and the bad thing is she's seen too many women kind of do this kind of thing look what Kamora Lee Simmons did. She actually has had a reasonably successful career, but she was a model, a supermodel in somebody's eyes, but a model nonetheless. What has Aisha Curry done? Other than being married to Steph Curry, but that's not going to change anything. This is going to nag at her, nag at them until she ends up. But now there's another possible alternative. Steph could try to work behind the scenes with some Hollywood producer, friend, family, and try to throw some work her way and try to get her in Hollywood. But you know what? It'll even be worse because honestly, when she gets up on the screen and it shows that she doesn't have the chops, shows that she doesn't have that it factor, then you got to deal with the fallout of that. When you marry a woman who thinks she's better than you, when you're with somebody who is ultimately going to be jealous of you, who can't play their role, does not like the spotlight being on you, you're signing up for a life of misery. There's going to be this passive aggressive, low level contempt for you because at the end of the day, you're really not what she wanted. You're not what she wanted to do. She wanted something completely else and she's living a life that somebody else planned for her. And even though it's probably the best thing for her, she thinks she can do better. Mm, thank you. Till next time, That's it. talk it. All right. Well, that's some heavy stuff right there. He dropped some, some nuggets in that thing. Bishop, there's a lot of sisters right now in Israel who think they can do better than their husband. There's a lot of sisters. I see them. They think they can do. When they come, they start talking to you. Their husband's sitting right there. They're sitting right there. The way they're talking, they, they feel like I can do, I can do be better. I can do better. No, sister, you cannot do better. If you can do better, how come you come in that you're single? How can we come in just a single? You could not keep a man. That means you could not do better. You have two kids, no man. Now, you married this brother, you can do better. No. Because that brother you married, before him, everybody you was messing with, they were niggas. Yes. You two baby daddies, they are niggas. Yes. 
They are bastard kids. They are niggas. That's the, I'm the, hey, I'm just being for real. I'm just real. That's what they are. Now you, now most I got blessed with this brother. You look at him like, oh, I'm better than him. I can do better. No, sister, you cannot do better. Like Bishop said, you got exactly what you deserve. Get First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians. Hey, so the point with that video is that when you when we, you examine the Proverbs thirty one sister. Not only was her husband known, like, uh, like the brother gave the example of uh, Stefan, what's his name? Yeah, Steph Curry. Curry. Steph Curry. The Proverbs 31 woman put her bricks in. Her name was known. People knew her. It was, she wasn't bitter against her husband. But the sister we read about in Sirach, 25, whose countenance was darkened, that's what we, that's what we saw there. Who, the wife is bitter. She can't, she cannot, like he said, she flew too close to the sun. I thought I had to ponder. I said, flew. That's an old uh, uh, story. Um, like, a, what do you call it? Yeah. Where Icarus, right. He made these wings. He put them together with wax. And he had to get out of prison. And he flew off the top of the prison. And he kept flying higher and higher. He got too close to the sun. The wax on the wings started to melt. And he fell and died. So he said, when you marry a woman that's jealous of you, she can't even measure up. She flew too close to the sun. That's some heavy stuff. It's gonna, she gonna, that marriage is going to fall apart. And Bishop, you know, sometimes the, uh, the sister will seek her attention or seek her fame from social media. And she'll end up shaming her husband for her, for her goal of gaining some spotlight to outshine him. So you got to be mindful of that. That's a heavy point right there. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. So brothers, sisters, y'all got to know your worth. If You might not be worth nothing right now if you do real self-examination. I know we're all children of God in here, but there's always room for what? Growth or improvement. Always. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Now people often ask, why did the Apostle Paul say that? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Look at verse 32. Verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness. Meaning worry. He that is unmarried, carry for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. So you're focused on serving the Lord when you're not married. That's why Paul said that. Go back to 7 and 1. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So Paul says, nevertheless, to avoid sexual sin, that's what fornication is, to avoid sexual sins, let every man have his own wife, here's the part, underline this part, and let every woman have her own own husband. I don't know what y'all this polygamy stuff y'all talking about. The Bible says let every woman have her own husband. Ain't no sharing. No, 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 no. That ain't coming until Isaiah 4 kick in and we ain't in Isaiah 4 days yet. Okay. So until that day, until Isaiah 4 kick in, every woman must have her own husband. You got these brothers talking about, babe, I've been doing research. No, you, 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 your rod has been doing research. I've been doing research, hon. You know, because, you know, back in the day, our forefathers, you know what I'm saying, had two, three, four women. You know, you know. But Raheem, I don't understand. You was learning with the brothers and it says that every woman have her own. It don't mean that, babe. It don't mean that. Really? And, and, and you know, you know the kind of women that get stuck like that? Them old desperate women. Them old, I just need any kind of old dang lang women. Those women that ain't got nothing going on for them, women. She ain't paid a bill all her life. The brother paid for everything. So because he took care of everything, he must follow behind his simple behind as he gets all these ratchet holes on the side. And Lord knows what you're going to catch. 
She wake up one day, Raheem, I'm scratching down there. What I got, what's wrong with me? I went to the doctor, I got crabs. Where the hell I get crabs from? Maybe it's from Shaniqua. Who's Shaniqua? That's wife number three. What? And so, and because she got so low self-esteem, she didn't want to wait for a real brother. She got sucking. Alrighty then. Read on. And I'm sorry, BH. I know you're mad at me right now. <laughs> I know you're mad, but I love you. Come on. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, mm -hmm. and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Ah, oh, sookie sookie now. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. That goes into sex. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We Verse 4. The wife have not power over, of, of her body, of her own body, but the husband. Yeah, here, here, here in America, here in America, they tell a woman, be transformed. No, they say, they say, be conformed to this world. The women come in Israel, they want to be conformed to this world and say, I don't, I don't, I'm not in the mood. He go and get some anyway. She go, you rape me. This babe, huh? That's not rape. Can you read the verse again? Yes, sir. Verse four. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. You see that? But she don't believe that. You know why? Because she's not been transformed in her mind. She, her mind is America's mind. This is what Paul is showing us. Her mind is TV. You rape me. You're not supposed to do what I don't want you to do. What did say, Lava? The Bible just tells you don't have power over there. She don't believe that. <laughs> That's why these old American Negro peens, uh-uh. She don't believe that thing. So, bruh, here she go. I got a headache. I, mean, I got a headache. Soon as she come through the door, babe, here's an aspirin. I don't need no aspirin. I ain't got no headache. Good. Get undressed and get in the bed. That's how you handle that. The hell is this? Did you hold my back? Oh, my back. Well, you can just lay on your stomach. Then you'll be all right. The hell is this? Anybody got time for that? Yeah, then, then, then the sister get mad because some other woman caught his, her husband's attention. And then we get the phone calls and the emails, my husband ain't right. Well, why ain't he right? He looking at, here we go, he looking at porn. And here's my, my here we go, my wife. Uh, sister, so-and-so said, oh, husband's looking at porn. She on the phone with it. Here she go. Sister, she put on mute. Sister, so-and-so's husband looking at porn. What should I tell her? I said, hey. Tell her to go to Victoria's Secrets, put on some edible panties, and swing from the chandeliers and work it like her mama showed how to work right there. Bigger, bigger, bigger. <laughs> and you ain't ever got to worry about this dude watching porn no more. Because I know what's going on. I tell her why. I know what's going on. Here y'all get all comfortable and you don't want to do nothing no more. What you used to do to get the man, you don't want to do it no more. You research sisters know what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you about a research sister. She going to get with the man. She going to, she, hey, I'm going to show you something real quick. Look at Hebrews 13, 4 again. I'm going to show you something. Bear with me. Just bear with me. I'm going to try not to sound rude and crass. I'm going to try and sound nice. In fact, I'm going to try and sound edumacated. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Here and, come. And the bed undefiled. And you know what that means, the bed undefiled, meaning what you and your spouse is doing, you can do it all night long. It ain't nobody's business. But here come the research, sister. You know, I've been doing research, and I shouldn't be giving fellatio. BJ, I know you're young. You don't know what that word means. It's BJ. Just look at a BJ. Urban Dictionary, BJ. What is that? She, gone, she used to give a BJ like nobody's business. She could suck a golf ball out of a truck exhaust. Hey, hey. But now she's doing research. And in the research, it says sodomy. And she goes, oh, that's sodomy? Listen, that's not the biblical definition of sodomy. The biblical definition of sodomy goes with same sex. She's doing research. So now she don't want to, she don't want to, she don't want to do that. She don't want to help her husband. Brothers, I'm going to help you out here. You know what you do? Bring it out. You get you some jelly. You put that thing, that jelly on. You say, listen, you got, you got 10 minutes. 
if you don't do what you used to do, I'm going out this door. I'm telling I ain't got time for anybody playing games with these daggone women. The hell is this? Because you know if she went with the white man, he'd have her doing the nastiest thing ever. And she would never tell the white man, I don't do that. White man got his foot on her head. She's vomiting, and he's still knocking her back out. <laughs> she don't say nothing. But here you go. Put some jelly on it. The hell is this? Or syrup, whatever you like. Give them my damn nerves, these research sisters. The Bible says the bed is undefiled. I'm tired of the emails. And listen, listen, here go the sister. After we tear up in the, in the scriptures, she going to go, well... Well, uh, here she go. How my Satan goes, say his balls stink. Oh, his balls stink. <laughs> These are the emails. My wife said, let me see the email. He, he don't wash downstairs, so I don't feel comfortable doing that. Well, take that nigga in the shower and put some soap on it. What the hell is this? Yeah, the royal penis is clean now. <laughs> have him take a bath. Put them in. Put, have the nice hot to Hey. Because you know, he said, babe, have it ready when I get home. Make sure the bath is there. Babe, get in the tub. I'll wash you. I'll do it for you. Babe, babe, babe. Treat the man like a king. Daggone women. Get on my nerves. <laughs> Where we at now? I'm hey, sorry bishop. if I sounded rude and crass. Bishop. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, Bishop. Bishop, brother said, you're the only one who can get away with that. <laughs> Say Brother say you're the only one can talk like that. You get away with it. Lord have mercy. Are we trying to talk like that. That's that say we, we just evil. <laughs> so where we at? You want to go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 7 1 Corinthians four? 7 Yes, sir. 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 4. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. So whatever he wants, sisters, he want. Do that thing. Go ahead. And likewise, also the husband have not power of his own body. But the wife. And brothers, it's the same way. You, and some of you, bro, some of you brothers, listen. One brother, remember the age, hey, uh, Captain Shema, y'all know what I'm talking about. Brother going to talk about, she stink down there. Listen, if that's the case, uh, they got medication for that thing down there. He said a bath don't work on her. Her parachute is fumigated. The hell is this? You better help your wife out. Don't talk about her like that. Don't bring that to us telling, her, telling us your wife vagina, her vag stink. That's rude, bro. Take her somewhere to the doctor. I'll ask her, sister, what do you do? Get some real counsel on that. And what the brother, because we might not know. That's woman stuff. Go over there to the senior sister. Have your go over there and talk to them. That's what you got to do, you know? Shoot, the hell is going on here? Yeah, it could be her diet. She need to stop eating steak seven times a week. In fact, she need to fast a few days. Clean that gut out, you know? Purge that thing. Where we at? Verse 5 now, 1 Corinthians 7, 5? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other. The Bible says defraud ye not one another. Don't hold back sex. Now, now listen, if she's on her menstrual, everybody understands that for you nasty brothers. If she's on her menstrual, the Bible tells you not to deal with her on her menstrual. For seven days, God says. Go ahead. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be for cons be with consent for a time. Now, except it be with consent, what kind of consent? Read on. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. Okay, sis. now the sisters online said if the sister washes, takes a bath with apple cider vinegar, her parachute going to be okay. There you go. It might get a little tighter down there. Knowledge. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Sisters, I'm trying not to be rude. You done put out two, three, four kids. Some VJJs don't snap back like that. So when your husband asks you for a little fellatio, because you know the mouth can get tight. She <laughs> That's all a man is asking for. He missed that, that, that tight feeling. I'm sorry. I, I, it just went through my mind. I'm sorry. Because brother complain about this. Yeah, brothers, because sisters, brothers complain. Brothers complain about this thing. And we don't want to see y'all end up in divorce court. We want y'all to be happy. Happy, happy, joy, joy.
Where we at? Verse Corinthians 7 and 5, we just finished it. Read it again, I didn't hear Yes, sir. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. And See, that's the only time you don't have sex. When you give yourselves to fasting and prayer, that's husband and wife, not just one of you, but the two of you agree. We have an issue, a family, something's going on in the family, let's fast. We ain't going to touch each other because that's what God's law is saying here. Go ahead. And come together again. And then you come together again sexually. Why? That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Because if you don't come again sexually together, Satan's going to tempt one of y'all. Whether it's the male or the female, Satan's going to so say, she looking at another man. He looking at another woman. Why? Because you ain't give him, her none and she ain't give you none. Y'all mad with each other. Y'all don't want to have sex. Now somebody's going to be on Backpage.com looking on uh, matchmakers and all of that. What's that little website? Uh, uh, Tinder? Tinder and all that foolishness. Like they, they, they uh, what's that movie? Uh, Slim and Slim, Queen and Slim. They, they met each other on Tinder, right? Yeah, so Tinder, what's, here she go, what's that? She Googling things now. That's what happens when you, when you play that sex game, I'm gonna hold back from you. Then when them eyes start wa wandering, now you mad. Go ahead. Verse six, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment. You know when he says this part here, but I speak this by permission, not of commandment, meaning there's no commandment you could go back in the Old Testament to reference what Paul is talking about. So the Lord gave him permission to explain and discuss certain things, what we're talking about now. Go ahead. Verse 7. For I would that all men were even as myself. What does that mean? That goes back to verse 32. Read verse 32. Yes, sir. Verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, caring for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Paul was single. Okay, because he chose to be single to dedicate his life to the Most High's work. Go back. Verse 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man have his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows. The unmarried and to the widows. Paul's, the widows are those women whose husbands died. Go ahead. It is good for them if they abide even as I. So Paul said it's good if you, if you remain single just like me. Give yourself, dedicate yourself to the one true God. That's what Paul is saying. Go ahead. But if they cannot contain. Uh-oh, if you cannot contain sexually. Let them marry. Let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. For it is better to marry than to burn sexually. That's what he's saying. But now, you know what people have done in the truth? They have read that and they have, this, some sisters have just ran on that side of the room and grabbed any old brother she saw. Because she wanted any old kind of dang-a-lang, dang-a-lang. But guess what, sister? You forgot. Paul is not saying to skip the steps to marriage. He's just saying it's better to marry than to burn. One of the steps is Sirach 6 and 7. Get me that? Yes, sir. Sirach. Chapter 6 and verse 7. So while you're burning sexually, because you just got to have it, she just got to have it, you still need to apply this. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. You still got to prove him, sister. You brothers, you might be burning sexually. You still got to prove her. You can't skip over that and get over any old woman you see. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Read. Was that it? No, sir. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. Plus, and don't be hasty to credit. Because you know people, he's, women go, oh, he's good. He's all right. Sisters too. Brothers go, she's good. She's, mm -mm. Y'all been talking for three weeks. That is not enough time to get to know one another. In fact, six months really is not enough time. If you ask me, my advice, year, two years. Then you get to know one another. Then you start to know each other's personality, character flaws, and all that. You say, okay, I see now. You get to know one another. Then you got to decide, am I able to put up with this person's personality traits and character flaws? If y'all talk about it, can you, let's improve this about one another. I want you to do this. Can you do that for me? Okay, and that's how you get to know one another, improve one another. And they start to change and transform and upgrade to that spirit you want them to be at. Look at 1 John 4 and 1. 
The book of First John, chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So you see that, beloved, believe not every spirit. Now, although this is going into uh, people that claim to know the scriptures, it's also a principle for proving anybody. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Sister, brothers will tell you they are of God. They will tell you that they love the Lord, and likewise, vice versa, brothers. These women over here will tell you they love the Lord. It says, uh, try the spirits. To try the spirits is the same thing that says prove a friend. It's saying the same thing. Try a friend, prove a spirit. Prove them whether they love the Lord. You got to observe them. Talk to them. Get to know them. That's how you try. That's how you prove. Read that again. Yes, sir. Uh, 1 John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try Why? the spirit. Because people lie. Brothers lie. Sisters lie. Read it again. Yes, sir. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Give me 1 Corinthians 6, 15. I'm going sh to show you something. When you're burning, when Paul said it's better to marry than to burn, you decide you don't want to go through the proving process of trying the spirit. This is what happens. 1 Corinthians 6, 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Know ye not? That your bodies are the members of Christ? Mm -hmm. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. It is forbidden for us to deal with harlots, brothers. A harlot is any old woman. Or you, you don't got. You might not have to pay her. How much is how much is it for? Uh, how much is it? Forty dollars. It's a roundaway, brother, over there. $40 for a, uh, or whatever, some whatever kind of job you're getting. You know what I'm talking about, sex. Some of these hoes, harlots, harlots, will be satisfied with a happy meal. That's all you got to give a happy meal. She'll make you smile. Read that again. <clears throat> First Corinthians 6, verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. God forbid means no. You're not some brothers don't deal with harlots. And a harlot don't have to be. Well, she wasn't standing on the corner uh, selling herself. She ain't a harlot. Y'all know them holes in the projects. Right. Some of them don't even live in the projects. They just around the around the corner, some of them. You know where they at. Just taking the McDonald's. They they will they will Yeah. Read on. <laughs> Verse 16. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot? Is one body for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. That's why it's forbidden for us to join. That, that's how you know sex is spiritual. It says what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh, meaning one spirit. They all come together. She takes, she takes your DNA goals and gets absorbed in her and vice versa. Sex is spiritual. I know it's deep right there, but it's real. Go ahead. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Watch what it calls it now. Read. Flee fornication. The Bible is calling sex with a harlot fornication. That's another form of fornication. Stay off Backpage.com. Stay off, what is it, Tinder? Stay off Tinder uh, and those type of things. Because you're going to get a harlot. You're not going to get a God-fearing woman. Okay? From there. Give me Sirach 23, 17. The book of Sirach, chapter 23, verse 17. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he dies. So brothers who have that whoremonger spirit, there's no one woman that can satisfy him. The Bible says the only thing that can stop a whoremonger brother is death. So sister, you see this brother, you know through talking to him, he had woman after woman after woman after woman. Now he's been in six months, maybe a year. And you think you could tame that spirit. 
and you decide you don't want to wait two years for proving. No. You just ruined your life. Yeah, I can fi- you missus fix it. I'm the quicker fixer upper. Mm-mm. You got a red cape coming out of that. That's, that's not a cape, that's a parachute hanging. You can't trip tame that dude. That dude's a whoremonger, brother. Not only when you meet him, you find out he's a whoremonger. He got kids across the country he ain't taking care of. And you want to marry him. Our suggestion, our advice, you better worry, wait two years and prove this guy to see if he's truly changed, if he's truly transformed in a renewing of his mind. But if you decide not to take our counsel, okay. Deuteronomy 23, 17. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. That's what you want right there. That part right there. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. So likewise, brothers, some of these sisters, they come in live, having lived the life of a whore. Meaning she's a round the way girl. She's that ratchet sister. Now, there's an expression, you can't change a hoe into a housewife, but God can. The Lord can. If she's truly changed, you got to observe, talk to her, get to know her, listen to her, see if she lied. I'm going to give you a lie right now, what a sister done said to her brother. Sister used to be a hoe. She used to dance in a strip club. I said, brother, my advice to you is, she, I, no, I said to him, she's not for you. He says, no, she's for me. I said, you're a virgin? He said, yeah, I'm a virgin. I said, you never had sex before? She said, he said, I never had sex before. I said, she's not for you. Why do you say that? I think she's for me. I said, how old are you? She said, he said, I'm 21. I said, how old is she? She's 35. I said, she's not for you. No, Bishop, you don't know what you're talking about. She's for me. Little did I know that back at the ranch, they was doing, uh, what's that thing when you talk to each other? Phone sex. Yeah, on, on FaceTime. And she opened her parachute. And his head went to the screen like that. <laughs> He'd never seen it before. He, he, no, he was only on the screen. If he could have fallen, he would have. Spiritually, he fell in. I said, bruh, she's not changed. She's not. I said, she showed you. Uh, I said, she showed you what? She showed me her thing. Her thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that thing down there. I said, she's not for you. She for me. I said, let me tell you, bruh. Ask her her life. Just ask her her past without me having to tell you. So he gonna go ask her her life. I don't know what Bishop talking about. He need to mind his business. I said, ask her if she ever worked in a, in a club. He gonna, he, he gonna, his little self gonna go over there. He used to work in a club. Oh, here he go, here he go. Yeah, I used to work in a club, but I wore jeans in the club. I worked in a strict club, but I wore jeans in the club. And I just handed out the drinks. He going to come back. Bishop, you don't know what you're talking about. She wore jeans in the strip club. I said, you ever been to a strip club? No. I said, shut the hell up. <laughs> no woman goes in there wearing jeans in a strip club. The hell you talking about? I said, I said bro, let me ask. Here's another question. I'm not trying to get in your business. But this sister been around. She's seen all kind of dangalang, dangalangs. She's seen little ones, big ones, curved ones, ones that go backwards and forth. All kinds, she's seen it. I said, I just got one question. You, if you're not blessed, she not for you. He go to brother, he go. Well, I think I'm all right. Uh, I said, if you got to ask or think you think you're, said, you're not blessed, stop. She not for you. Here he going to tell her, uh, he Bishop said, if, if I'm not blessed, you, you, I really shouldn't be with you. She's going to say, listen, size don't matter to me. I said, stop. This is a round away girl right there. She's seen all kinds. All kind of prints she's seen. She worked in the champagne room. And there is sex in the champagne room. I said, little brother, sit your behind down. You ain't, you, I said, I'm not, I'm not blessing this marriage. I'm going to make sure none of the deacons bless this marriage. You trying to destroy my life. I said, you, you got that right. I'm all, you know why? His mama came to me and said, watch out for my son. Please don't make him, let him make a mistake. So I made sure I watched out for that boy. And I told his mother, I said, I'm going to watch out for him. That's, that's what I did. 
He, he hated me for months. He couldn't stand my guts. If he could have stabbed me, he would have stabbed me right there. He said, no, they're going to beat me down if I stab him. I had to look out. I said, marry that sister right over there. I said, we went trusted. That's the sister right there. He married the sister. She a virgin. He a virgin. I said, y'all work well together. You simple. She's simple too. Y'all be all right together. Y'all going to be good. Y'all could grow. Y'all could grow. And they doing good today. All praise to the Lord. All praise. All praise. All praise. <laughs> hey, you, know, you know something, Bishop? All, all your camp leaders got to understand something. Your job is to look out for the young brothers. Because a lot of them, they have no common sense. Believe it or not, they have no common sense. Like the young men, then they're 21, 22, 23. Listen, look out for them. They're going to come and they'll be like, hey, yo, why are you talking to that sister? You Guess what? you the father. You're supposed to say, hey, what, what, what you talking to that sister about? You don't, listen, you should not care if they get mad. Listen, I don't care if you get mad or not. How, I want you get mad. But you don't come in that you didn't, you didn't come in that mistake. Get mad, I don't care. You be all right. You be all right. Get mad, whatever you want. Like you know, little Issa here. We got looking for little Issa right here. You know what I'm saying we ain't gonna let little Issa make the same mis mis make mistake. We're gonna like, hey, little Issa, do this, do that. We're gonna keep our eyes on him, and we're gonna make sure he don't commit to no uh 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 damn champagne wound. <laughs> now we're gonna check out a clip. I think now, now now I don't follow uh, basketball. Some of the brothers I don't get a lot of basketball, but I saw this video. This video right here, this thing gonna strike home. When you get with the wrong type of woman, I've been telling you brothers who got property. Some of you brothers, you're doing okay for yourselves. Some of you are, uh, in your early or late twenties, early thirties, forties, you have acquired stuff, properties, things like that. Let's play this video. What's his name? Steven Jackson. Play this video. Now, this video is kind of long, so we might interrupt all the way through, but it's a very good video. And I'm not saying he's a righteous brother. Now, some brothers have met him. Some brothers have met him, gave him flies and all that. But what he says, you can glean some nuggets out of what he's saying. Play this. And my ups and downs with the youth so they won't make these same mistakes. Once again, this is not to demean anyone. This story is not to demean anyone, right? It's just the truth. It's facts. It ain't no made up shit. Everything I'm talking, everything I'm finna tell y'all is all facts. I'm trying to get this light out back of my head. We go. All right. Let me say this one more time for all you motherfuckers who want to say what you want to say and don't want to hear what I said. Pause it. Do what I say okay, disclaimer, because I know I'm going to get an email. He was cursing. You know what people get on my nerves when they say that? Like when they in their house, they don't curse. Let me tell you, some of the most Christianized people is the biggest cusses. You ever see what's that gospel singer named Shirley Caesar? Get her mask. Watch how what she say to you. It'd be all kind of words, but the child of God. T.D. Jakes too. All of them. They all curse. And he did, and their people in their congregation, he cursed. Like when you walk outside these doors, people ain't dropping F-bombs left and right. But this is how the brother talk. And he's, yeah, he's smoking weed, but that ain't the point of the video. Go on back now. Watch. Play the video. Try Take to your bag. What I out say. The room. This is not to demean anyone. This is not to demean anyone. These are facts. These are my life experiences. This is stuff that I've experienced, that I've learned from, that I want to share with youngsters so they won't make the same mistakes I've made. Is that clear? To all you blogs that's going to try to take what I say and put it on your blog and try to make a story that nobody ain't going to see anyway because you only got 660,000 followers, I'm not going to be the guy that go on your blog Cause you twisted something I said and, and 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 speak on it to make your blog get attention. Nah, I ain't that stupid, fam. I'm on Showtime. I'm on Fox. Okay, your blog because you twist the words and made up shit. No, anybody got a everybody got a blog. So ninety percent of the blog shit is false. All right. So don't pay attention to no blogs. Y'all know I'm a real one. So y'all can come right here to my page and I'm gonna give it to y'all real. I ain't never lied about nothing and ain't no reason to lie now, right? All right. So 
I'm giving game to the young man out here and tell him the experience I've had. This is not to demean nobody once again, okay? This is free game. Shout out to everybody. I love everybody. I love being black first. You know what I'm saying? And I love everybody that's black, women included. Let me get that clear because a, a lot of y'all just ignorant. But let me say this too. A hit dog will holler. A hit dog will holler. You Pause. ain't got to say no That name. means if you're guilty, you're going to get mad. Only the guilty ones get mad at stuff. Go ahead. You ain't got to point no fingers. You ain't got to do nothing. A hit dog will holler, bro. This is facts. All right. So. And I hope even women, I hope some women hear this and be like, you know what? I'm going to find me a one man. I hope this is for women and men, but I want my young man to take heed to this and take, listen to this and take the right advice from this. Okay. Yeah, the story is a little funny too, but take the right advice from this. And and the moral of this story is find you one woman. This is the whole reason for this for me telling the story. Find you one woman, love her through the good and bad, and build with her. Because I'm telling you, if you think having a whole bunch of hoes and having multiple kids by women is something to brag about, it's the, it, it will ruin your life. Thank God it didn't ruin mine. But it will, it, will, it will add a lot of stress to your life that you don't need, bro. Facts, all right? All right, so bam. So I'm, I'm, with, I'm, I'm with a chick at the time. I'm with a chick at the time, right? And uh, me and her together, uh, we've been together for like a year or two. Um, I met her in New York uh, in the subway. I was driving. I was my first year in NBA. I met her in New York. And... Um, I flagged her down while she was driving, got her number, da da da. End up talking to her. We end up dating um, for a year or two. Uh, I go to San Antonio, right? She's with me in San Antonio. So y'all know I won a championship. So when it was time for me to go negotiate my contract the following year, the team told me. What's the number? It's, we want you here, Jack. It's a number of reasons why you're all here. And this is my first time ever hearing something like this. So one of the reasons why San Antonio didn't want to sign me back was because of the girl I was dating at the time. Said she was a bad influence to some of the other wives. They didn't like how she dressed. Wait, stop. And San was a Did y'all hear this? This is a messed up. This is what we was reading about earlier. When you get a wife and you when you hear her name pop up and you sigh bitterly, this is what was going on because his wife would obviously, nobody liked her. She couldn't get along with nobody. She didn't know how to dress. Not even his wife, but it was his girlfriend at the time. Go on. Go ahead. It wasn't that type of organization, but how can you tell somebody how to dress? You know what I'm saying? This was my woman, so I didn't really care about it at the time. I didn't really pay him no attention. Cool, I bounced. You know what I'm saying? Y'all should be worried about my basketball, not who I'm dating, right? So that was that's, that's one reason why I didn't sign back after we won the championship in San Antonio, right? Was because of the woman I was with, right? Bam. So, some of you is not going to get now. some of you is not going to get wink because of your wife. Atlanta, me and her fight in Atlanta. We about, we have a rocky relationship in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? But I, we, you know we we working shit out. You know, no no relationship is perfect. Come to Atlanta, I sign with Indiana the next year, and I sign my big contract in Indiana. Right. I signed my big contract in Indiana. Before I get my big contract, we still together. We together, we living together and all that, right? So we moved to Indiana. I play a season in Indiana. I proposed to her. I can't remember why I proposed to her. None of that matters anyway, though. But I proposed to her. And during that time, you know, we plan to get married in Houston. We plan to get married in Houston, right? So newsflash for all 530 y'all on here. In order for a prenup to get drawn up, the 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 two people, the man and the, the husband and the wife, have to agree on what the and what on what the prenup says in order for the prenup to come out valid and you both sign it. Let me say that again. In order for a prenup to get drawn up, both sides have to agree. The 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 husband and the wife, the bride and the groom, they both have to agree. On the prenup before it's written up, before it before it can even get written up, you have to agree on it, right? So, 
I take care of a lot of people. I'm never letting one woman control of all the hard work I've done in my life. None of these motherfuckers was in the gym with me, right? So Wait, but, wait. Do y'all hear what he just said? I never let a woman take control of me. He said none of these women was in a gym with me while I was working. Give me that scripture real quick about the preeminence in Sirach. What he's saying is so true. What he's saying is so... You work, you, you, whatever your gift, your skills, brother, the woman comes, not all sisters, I'm not making a blanket statement, but if you get that slug sister, you know what a slug is, that bum bee who come and want to take what you built all your life, read that, read that, read that, come on, get live. Sirach yet. chapter 33, verse 18. Sirach 33, verse 18. Here's the point, what he's saying. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken, hearken with your ears, you rulers of the congregation. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. You see that? Give not, I can't quote, give not thy what? Thy son. Son. And wife. And the part we want to look at is wife. Don't give your wife what? Thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. Don't give no woman power over you while you live, brothers. You some, like he's a ball player. He's in a gym from sunup to sundown, practice, practice, practice. And here come Miss Johnny come lately. Now she want to get in on it. Mm -mm. He, he, that's why he said, I ain't seen none of these women in the gym with me. Y'all better keep this in mind. Was that a Gedaliah? Verse 22 now. Go ahead. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Keep to yourself the preeminence. This is for you've been working hard. You single, you building your paper, you building your credit, you doing all that you got to do. Mm. Go ahead. Leave not a stain in thine honor. Now listen, I'm not making reference to you ain't got nothing and she ain't got nothing. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about you got something already. Now here she come. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now look, guess what? Even if you ain't got nothing, still keep to yourself the preeminence. Right, right, right. Let, me, let, me, let me put it out like that. Because... Here you go. You ain't got nothing. She ain't got nothing. You're building stuff. You work. She work. You make the mistake. Let's get a joint bank account together. Together? Together. Now all your money ain't going in this joint bank account and all, all her money going there. Now she getting mad at you. And she says, you know what? I'm going to take all the money out the bank out with a press of a button. Boom! She got all your money and she skipped town. It has happened at least off the top of my head, three times. Three times. You made the mistake of putting all your money in an account with her. The second she got in the argument, you got, she got mad at you, and she's talking to some other homeboy, she skipped town and take everything you built for. One sister took, how much she took? 32,000. 30, 32 grand. And the brother was crying. Well, I said, you simple. We said, you simple as hell. We told you to get your money out of that account. You don't listen, but you was in so much in love, L-U-B, love. You bet, if you get a joint account, just let it be for bills. Put X amount of money in, this is for bills. And you make sure you got your own stash. And if she got her own stash, that's fine, babe. I don't want your money. You make your money. And if she ain't working, then you give her his your allowance. Glean off that. Okay, that's how you do it. Keep to yourself the preeminence, though. Back to the video. Did we finish get a liar? Okay, ba back to the video. So whoever I'm married to, they signed the prenup off top. I'm not, it's not even a second guess. So me and I had to talk about it. So it's, we get the prenup back at least three, four months before the wedding, right? About four months, maybe at least, at least three to four months before the wedding. This is all true, y'all. So... Four months, three, four months, when we get the P and I give it to her. I hope Grant, none of you brothers are get getting spirits so y'all cause it a weed. Oh, I sure do miss that. Hey, put, put it back a, a few seconds. Put it back a few seconds. Go ahead. So, four months, three, four months, when we get the P and I give it to her. Granted, when I give it to her, she shouldn't be surprised by it because me and her sat down and agreed up on the prenup, right? Me and her agreed up on the prenup. We agreed. Listen to me, y'all. 
We agreed on the prenup. Bam. So we agree on it. A month passed, like two months for the wedding. I'm like, yo, look, we need to get that prenup signed so we can go ahead and, you know, send it in and get it, get it, you know, get all that taken care of. So when we get down there to Houston, we ain't got to worry about it. I tell her that like two or three times. It's a month. That was two months before the wedding. It's a month before the wedding. Look, bro. I just we this is this is something we agreed on. We shouldn't be. I shouldn't have to keep coming tell you to sign this prenup, right? What's up, Bird? I shouldn't have to, Bird. You know about this. I shouldn't have to tell you to sign this prenup, right? This is what I'm telling her. This for, after the first time I came to it was two months before the wedding. Now it's a month before the wedding. I'm like, man, I've been asking you about this prenup. There's no way I should have to keep coming to you about this prenup knowing we had to agree on this before they even drew it up. So why do I have to keep coming to you about it, about getting this, getting this signed? She's like, I'm going to sign it. 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 I'm like, cool. You can sign it. But look, during that time, we making arrangements for the wedding, right? Because, you know, you still got to plan shit. So, you know, I love her. And I'm going to keep it real with you. I was in love with her. You know what I'm saying? I was in love with her. And we was building a family. So I'm like, okay, cool. I ain't going to make no big deal. I, 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 I went with planning a wedding. I didn't stop. I kept planning a wedding. I told her several times, dog, about the prenup and asking about it. So bam. So as we, this, 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 this is one of the twists of the wedding, right? So as we planned for the wedding, I'm from Texas, right? She from New York. I'm from Texas. I'm from Port Arthur, which is an hour from Houston where we get married, Right? I want my pastor to do it. He right there. It'll save us some money. Da, 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 da. She is adamant about this certain pastor doing the thing, right? So I'm like, cool. It's, it's, it's her wedding. I ain't got no problem. Keep in mind. Remember this pastor, right? Remember this pastor. This is a pastor. She 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 was I'm talking about screaming at me and everything. No, my he had this pastor has to do it. This pastor has. I'm like, well, this we can save money and make more sense. This is my pastor since I was a kid. You don't even know this guy. Some other girl brought this pastor to her attention. Some other girl brought the pastor name to her attention. She, this ain't this a pastor she's never seen. Pause. Don't even know. Y'all know these pastors charge to do a wedding, to officiate a wedding. We don't charge. So these pastors make everything a hustle, a money hustle. Go ahead, back to the video. But she don't want my pastor to do it, right? Cool. Remember that. So I'm like, fine. Fine. No problem. No problem. He can do it. Your pastor can do it. I'm cool with it. I ain't going to be petty. Cool. I want you to have This is your day. Everything is yours. I spent about 400000 on the wedding, y'all. About four hundred k, right? It's yours. Whatever you want to do. Hey, pastor don't matter to me. I just want to marry you. I don't even give a damn. Wait, pause right there. Brothers, y'all know men don't give a damn about a wedding ceremony. It's, it's the women. That's their day. They want to be seen. This is my day. It's about me. Look at me. That's women. Brothers don't give a daggone about that crap. I well, hey, when I got married, my father-in-law, he, it ain't no 400K. The wedding we had was like 30K. But I said to the man, I said, I said sir, I said, I'm struggling. Your daughter's struggling. How about you use that 30K and put down on a house for us? He gonna look at me, little nigga, you don't tell me what to do with my mouth, honey. I do what I want to do. I want to invite my friends. I said, I'm just saying, all right, all right. I left it alone. I left it alone. <laughs> Go ahead. Back to the video. Two weeks before the wedding. We going to Houston a week before the wedding. Now we had two weeks before the wedding. Everything planned, we ready to go. I'm like, look, bro, why I got to keep asking you about this prenup, bro? It ain't like you don't know what's on it. Like, what motives? This is what I told her. What you up to? What motives you on? I ain't on nothing. I just ain't had time to sign up planning a wedding. All. So I'm like, man, listen, man, all you got to do is sign it. You ain't gotta, it ain't like you got to read it all over again. You know what's in it, da-da-da. I'm going to sign it. I'm going to sign it. Me, being the being a person I am, I know it's a wedding. 
and all that shit. I'm like, you know what? I know you probably just frustrated. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be a, 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 a supportive man at the time. I know you're going through a lot, baby. I know it's stuff, you know what I mean? Just, when we get, just make sure I get it for the wedding. You know what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. <laughs> we go to Houston. We get there, right? We get to Houston. The night I get to Houston, you know, I, 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 she, we, when we get to Houston, we separate. So she go with her friends. I go with my guys. You know, I'm at home. This is my hometown. So, you know, I'm strip clubbing all kind of shit. Wilding out with the homies. My partner Weezy on here. He was there. Wilding out with the homies and shit, having a good time. So my homegirl Mimi, mama, Miss Doris, was our nanny at the time, right? We had a nanny at the time. We had a baby. We had a nanny at the time. We had we had uh, we had our my oldest daughter, and my son was I think my son was on the way, and uh, so we had a nanny at the time. And uh, Miss Doris came to my room. I'm like Miss Doris, real J Sims. What's up, my boy? I'm like Miss Doris. You know, it's wedding in two days. I ain't got no prenup. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm telling you, Miss Doris, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. No, no, baby, don't. You know, you know, I'm all, I'm with you. You know, I'm with you. I know you're right, but. Don't start having that attitude. It's going to get done. Da, 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 da. Don't worry about it. It's going to get done. It's going to get done. So I'm like, all right, Miss Doris, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be optimistic, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, you know, I'm having a good time. Da, da, da. I'm like, am I having, a, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, listen, man, I ain't getting married without no prenup. Fuck out of here. Not five. You know, that's what I'm thinking the whole time. I'm like, man, I can't believe this motherfucking girl done wait, wait until I spent all this money, got all the way down here. So bam. Miss Doris come to me uh, saying, don't worry about it. It's going to get done. I'm going to go get it to sign it, da-da-da-da, right? So, my nigga, this the day of the wedding. Hold on, let me find my shit back up. <laughs> Y'all ready for the good part? So, so the day of the wedding, y'all. I got Stephon Barberry, I got Mike Bibby. But I can't remember who who was all in, in the wedding at the time, dog. I had everybody. I know I probably Bun was there. I had a lot of my homeboys in I'm talking about all my homeboys, dog. I can't remember who was all in the wedding at the time. But Mike Brown, celebrities, everybody, the her friends, everybody, right? So we Wake up that morning. We, I'm getting dressed. I'm getting dressed. You know what I'm saying? We all getting dressed for the wedding. Da, da, da. Everybody getting, you know what I'm saying? All my grooms, when we in the little grooms room, we all get dressed. In the back of my mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm all thinking about this damn prenup, right? That's all I'm thinking about. So my nanny comes in the room. She's like, how you doing, baby? Good morning. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, good morning. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what's up with the prenup? She like, uh. I talked to her. She said she's going to sign it. I'm, a, I'm I'm finna go get it right now. I just wanted to come check with you to see how you doing this morning. Make sure you all right. Make sure you wasn't stressing about it. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Nah, you say she going to, you know, you say she going to sign it. I'm cool with it. Getting dressed, me and my boys drinking, smoking, all that, getting dressed, having a good time, da, 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 whatever we doing for the wedding. So after we get dressed, where we staying at, at the hotel, where we staying at, it's a big ballroom where we was having a wedding, right? So we had to walk. We had to uh, go get on this private elevator. Me and all my, all my groomsmen, we get on the private elevator, and we go to a little back room where from the back room we just walk out into the wedding, right? So when we get to that, when we get to that room, that's when I, once we get in that room, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, hold up. You know what I'm saying? This one I really turn up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like... Man, hold up, hold up, man, hold up, hold up. You know what I'm saying? I, I you know, and then this, this, this one, Steph. This why, this why Steph Marbury and Mike Bibby, my brothers. All right, for life. Steph Bibby, Steph uh, Marbury and Mike Bibby are my real brothers. Like my real brothers. You see what I'm saying? No bullshit. These are my real brothers. So, we in the back. We walk to the back room, and the motherfucking um. The uh, the priest come in, the preacher come in with with his with his uh, other with his assistant, I guess, and then my nanny come back in there with a with a with a, like a with a spook look on her face, like, 
She still ain't. She she pulled me to the side and she like she still ain't signed it. So when I said that, I'm like, well, shit, I ain't getting married then. She was like, oh, oh, oh. and so look, so the preacher, remember the preacher, y'all, remember the preacher. When I say when I say, oh, I ain't no, nah, I ain't getting married. Steph was like, she ain't signed a prenup. What the fuck? What are we even here for? I'm like, yeah, dog, I ain't doing it. The preacher steps up. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The preacher says, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I look at him like, he said, this is what he said. He said, now, now hold on. Don't, now, I know you love this girl. Don't make a drastic decision. I think you should just let God handle it. I say, huh? I think you should just let God handle it. Me, as a, as a pastor, I don't believe in prenups. Nah, I know why she was fighting for you. You don't believe in prenups. Nah, it all makes sense. I ain't getting married. Damn what you believe in. I put everything in God's hand. And God is telling me to put the pen in her hand and make her sign this goddamn prenup before I get married. That's what God's telling me. So God's telling me and you two different things, partner. As that's going on, Steph Marbury grows crazy. Hell no. Nah. Nope, we ain't doing it. Hell, no, it ain't going on. Steph go crazy. Mike Bibby walks, are you serious, Steve? Fuck out of here. Everybody, no, 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 no. Bruh, this preacher has the nerves to sit there for about five or ten minutes and try to convince me that God told that, that he don't believe in prenups, so I shouldn't believe in him. Listen, bro, we ain't in the same tax bracket, first of all. You know what I'm saying? Bam. So now, now y'all see why she wanted that preacher so bad that she didn't even know. Bam. So bam. The dog, God take all my blessings if I'm lying, dog. This is a true story. I, it's too many people that was there to vouch for it. So bam. So listen. I'm going to tell y'all this. So I, I found out this after the wedding. You know what I'm saying? But on the way to the wedding, rest in peace, my grandma, my grandma dead now. But on the way to the wedding, my grandmother, this is before all this, everything I told y'all. My grandmother told my mama, Jude, it ain't going to be no wedding. This is before all this. My grandmother told this to my mama on the way to Houston to the wedding, right? So, bam. I'm telling him, look, bro, hell no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Hell no, nah, I'm not going to do it. By that time, it had, it had got rowdy in the bridesmaids room because my sister was in the wedding. You know what I'm saying? Because the wedding, the wedding had supposed to have been started. Bobby Valentino standing up there at the microphone ready to start singing. Ask Bobby Valentino. He was there. Bobby Valentino will tell you this whole story. He was right there. He's standing up there ready to sing, bro. Ready to start singing. So everybody getting ass like the fuck. My mama said my grandmother just sitting there like she already know what's going on. So, uh... It get, it, it get to getting a little ass over there. So my sister ended up coming out of there and say, I had to get out of there before I whip one of them hoes because they ended up talking crazy. Something like that. Not those exact words, but my sister was, was upset with what was said and that's so she had to walk out. So, bam. This is when the, this, uh, this is when, this is when she showed her true colors, bro. This is when she showed her true colors. So, wedding off. Yes. Wedding's off. We not doing it. Walk back up to the room. Walk back up to upstairs. Get room. We take. We getting undressed. Shit. Step. Step. Marbury's like, bro. Hold on. First of all, I'm lying. We get back to the room. We get back to the room. Right. Y'all know I'm gonna always be one thousand with everybody. All, one thousand. All. I'm gonna tell y'all the honest truth every time. When we first get back to the room after I called it off, when everybody trying to figure out what's going on, we all get back to my room. I break down crying, dog. Honest to God truth. I can't lie. Because I was hurt. Because I was ready to, I wanted to marry her, bro. This is the honest to God truth. I break down crying, dog, for about a good 20, 30 minutes. I break, I'm talking about I'm hard down crying, dog. I'm hard down crying because I'm hurt, dog. Like, I'm really hurt. I didn't think a woman would take me to this point 
over a piece of paper and not marry me, especially after we got a child and we trying to build some shit. Like I was honestly hurt. You know what I'm saying? I was hurt. I was in a hard down crying, dog. And this is why I love, this is why I fell in love with Mike Baby Mama. And this is why I always treat her like my own mama. I'm sitting there crying. I hear Steph in the background talking, man, fuck that shit. We finna turn up. Fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I'm talking about snot, everything. I'm hard down crying like I lost, like I lost my, I don't know, bro. I'm hard down crying as a grown man. I ain't never cried like that, right? So as I'm crying, Mike Bibby Mom's, Mike Bibby Mom walk up to me, dog, and it's bringing tears to my eyes today. She walk up to me. She grab her bare hand. Mike Bibby's mom wipe the snot and all this from my face, everything from my face. And she picked my chin up and she said, you became a man today. Nigga. <laughs> Nigga, I'm getting chills. She wiped snot from my my nose and wiped, wiped my eyes, my nigga, and said, and picked my chin up and say, you became a man today. So, with all that going on, this ain't even half, though. So, with all that's going on, after she do that, I come out of it. Steph like, man, you spend all this money. We finna go party. We finna go party. Da, da, da. Let's go downstairs and still have fun. Look, hey, look, my best friend, Roy D on here. Look, five Roy D. Am I lying, Roy D? Am I, have I told a lie yet, Roy D? He on here, five Roy D. That's my best, my brother. Same tattoos, everything. Listen, so as I'm wiping my tears and stuff off, you know what I'm saying, getting ready to go downstairs and party, her, uh, uh, somebody from her side, Comes to my room. This when it get tricky, y'all. Comes to my room and say, hey, Steve, hey, hold on, just calm down. She want to talk to you. She want to talk to you. I said, what she want to talk for? She's like, no, just calm down, man. You, you, you was about to marry her. You know what I'm saying? Just give her, just give her a second. Just out of respect, just, just give me, show me a little love and go talk to her, bro. I'm like, fuck it. Everybody in my room be like, man, fuck that. And my line, Scoop J. Scoop J on here right now, too. My cousin. He already know. Everybody know. This is no lie. So look, her uncle coming like, man, come talk to her. Come talk to her. I'm like, all right, I'll go talk to her. So look, I get in the room. She's still in her wedding dress, and she crying and shit, right? So soon as I walk in the room, she hard down crying. I'll sign it. I'll sign it. Da, 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 da. I'll sign it. I'm, I'm, whatever, whatever. I'll sign it. I'll sign it. Listen, I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> One thing I know, anytime somebody signs anything where they crying under any type of stress or any real emotional or something like that, that shit can get thrown out. I was already told that by my folks before I even signed this prenup, before I even got to Houston. So I was already on game. I was already on game. So the shit she tried. To, to, to get me in that room and see her tears and think I was going to buckle and just and, and she could sign it while she crying and all that. Then come back and when they, when they, when they try to stand up, she's going to be like, I was emotional at the time. Da, da, and they, I, they, it's, it's been thrown out. It's happened to men before. Five was not falling for that. Nah, sweetheart. You chose yo, you chose the decision you wanted to make and that's you didn't want to sign it. We don't, it's fucking over with. Fuck around. It's over with. I stood on that. Man, we go downstairs, distress. That's what it's called. Claim under distress. That, thanks, Nikki. My sister Nikki. Claim under distress. Anytime, it's, they can throw that shit straight out. So look, bro. That happens. Remember, I told you Steph was turned up. I'm talking about dog. This nigga Steph, my mom, Barry, is crazy, dog. Soon as we get to downstairs, he already in the DJ booth. Dog, this shit is hilarious. He in the DJ booth. As people walk in, Guess what's the first song they played? I want to know if y'all can guess the first song they played, dog. I'll give y'all a second. Let me put this roach out of five. Another one. Soon as we walk in, Roy D., the first song this nigga played, 
She gives me money when I'm in need. Yeah, she's a trifling friend indeed. Oh, yeah, she's a gold digger. Way over time. That's good to me. Oh, dog. She, the Kanye version. She gives me money when I'm in need. I ain't saying she's a gold digger, dog. I'm telling you, dog. That shit was classic, my nigga. Yo. That shit was classic, dog. End up blowing by three hundred, four hundred thousand, and this, and this, and this, and this uh, more crazy shit that happens, dog. You know, I'm gonna keep it all one thousand, child. Nobody never, nobody knows this, but my my partners that was around me. Hey, Rito, this the sickest, this the sickest part of the whole thing right here. After we delivered, had party at the hotel. Me and all my partners getting ready to go out that night. Two of her main squeezes that was dealt with her was with us that night. And I'm going to keep it funky. I downed one of them. You feel me? But that's her friends, though. Yeah, I did it. Sure did. So did. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> Fuck out of here. If I'ma trick 300, 400 thousand off for nothing, yeah, I'ma get some get back. I'ma get some get back. Jump down on the clean too. We pulling off. They outside. Where y'all going? Where y'all going? I look at my pot and I'm like, <laughs> they couldn't wait. They couldn't wait for the opportunity to jump down. They couldn't wait. They had they happy the wedding was off. She don't even know it. These are the girls she with the whole weekend that came with all that. Yeah. Yeah. That's how the game go, though. That's how the game go. True story, dog. True story. No bullshit. And let me tell y'all this, too. The same person I'm talking about, we wasn't together. I'm playing for Golden State. We have, a, we have kids together, so I want to bring my kids down there and to go to state and throw their birthday party down there, right? They did, they lived in uh, somewhere else at the time, you know what I'm saying, way across the country. I bring them there for the party. Fly them in, pay for the whole party, all that. Bro, I do know this too. Listen, RJ, I fly them, the mama and the kids there. Pay for about three thousand for the party, clowns, animals, all kind of shit, right? While she's there for the party, and she's supposed to be shopping, she left. She went down and filed for child support in California and used my address and said she lived there to get more money. If that what, it, what what do you call that, dog? What 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 you, what you call that though? Everybody wanna jump on me, but what do you call that? What do you call that? She leave, I get a letter in the mail. She didn't file child support with my address. They don't even live there. <laughs> what do you call that, bro? <laughs> what do you call that? What do you call that? To the point when we do go to court and I do have to pay, but the judge tell her, man, listen, I'm looking. You didn't been to four, five states trying to take this man to child support. Man, every state he live in, you try. You, enough is enough. <sighs> to my young man, to my young man out here, I don't want you to go through none of that. Why go through that when I can tell you what I've went through and now you can make a better decision because we ain't no different. You know what I'm saying? Me, you, him, her, we ain't no different. We all human beings. We all have decisions to make. And some of us grow, with, grow up with our father. Some of us don't. So if you like me that don't grow up with your father, a lot of stuff you're going to have to learn on your own from experience. You know what I'm saying? From fucking up. I've done the fucking up, bro. There's no need for you to if I can tell you how to do it. Find you one woman, dog. Love her. You know what I'm saying? Through the good and bad. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying be no fool. And I ain't telling no woman to be no fool. You know what I'm saying? But 
Just make, just take, you know how, you know how niggas make, uh, side decisions when they picking their weed or when they picking their clothes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Be more serious about the women you pick like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like for real. Boys take their time and focus on certain shit, jewelry and cars and shit and rims and shit like that. Take that same focus on, on the woman you decide to lay down with or spend your life with, dog. I'm telling you, dog. Especially if, if you plan, if, if you have dreams or admirations of being successful, dog. You know what I'm saying? You got to find a way to settle down, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I'm just giving you a game I know, dog. If you think having a lot of hoes and having a different chick in every area code, that shit is played out, my nigga. That shit ain't even safe no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, facts. That shit is not even safe to be thinking that's live. That ain't live, bro. I got bitches here. That, that shit is not live no more, my nigga. I'm just being real. That shit ain't live no more. It's 2020, dog. That shit is not live. That shit is not live, bro. And that's coming from a nigga who stayed in the strip clubs. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And and expect and especially I'm be on some especially being black. Because the 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 stigma of the black man being out the household is so crazy right now. Like, we need to start building more black households. You know what I'm saying? Because we at a time now, well, as blacks, we got way more ways to become millionaires now than ever. On God. Let's keep it real. We got more black millionaires now than ever. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying that to say, now is the time to start building black families. You know what I'm saying? Now to start to start, start building them legacies, dog. Building our roots back up, dog. You know what I'm saying? They kill black men when we date white women. But as soon as a, a black woman go get a sister, I mean, a black woman go get a white boy quick and they praise her. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really get into none of that, but you know what I'm saying? It, like, we can never get on the same page with women with a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? So I just respect them, you know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and I support them as much as I can. But we kind of we got to find a way as men to be accountable for our own shit. You know what I'm saying? We got to we 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 got to take uh lead and 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 force that that happy home. We got to take lead and find that that sister and build with her. We got to take lead and 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 to changing the mode and to showing young men that having a million hoes ain't was it. Because I'm telling you if you go from 10 holes, if you go from 10 girls to one girl, watch how much money you save. Having holes is not it, bro. That's not it. Find you a woman. Find you one woman, dog. Settle down, build with her. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. That shit saves you a lot of money, dog. Not only do it save you a lot of money, it saves you more peace. And what the, the 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 best thing you do? It's the I mean the best thing. Yeah. It's the right one, thing two, one, to do. Two. Hold, hold, hold that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at it, man. This is a man of the world that think like that. You see us in here when we trying to push that. Y'all see something wrong with that? This is a man of the world that we should be ashamed. Some of y'all should be ashamed. And but guess what? This thing here is gonna heal us up. We gonna be all right. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed But at the end of the day Nothing's in vain IUIC Has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes Gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.